Hey guys, welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. I am your host, Nick Knack, hanging out with you guys tonight. Guys, we are going to be talking about some comic books tonight. I normally don't do comic books here on the Plastic Planet because, well, I'm ashamed to admit I'm not much of a reader these days. But I did used to read a lot of comics. In fact, I got a whole bin full of comics here as well as uh, a couple uh, a couple uh, shelves of them back in the uh, back in the storage unit here downstairs here in the archive room of the Plastic Planet. But tonight I'm not going to show off just any comics. I'm going to show off my very very favorite ones and that is my Marvel uh, original vintage Transformer comics and some other Transformers media as well. It's all bots tonight, guys. We're talking bots, and I might show off one little acquisition here that I picked up in the last week at the end of the video as well. All right, guys, let's get to it right now. Knickknacks, Plastic Planet. Alrighty guys, so first and foremost, let's start out with these three comics here. These are the first three comic books I ever owned in my life outside of a one-off of a, of a Superman comic that I got when I was really, really little because I really twisted my, my mom's arm to, to buy that for me at the supermarket. And uh, she did, but my mom was never a really big enthusiast of me reading comic books growing up. So I didn't really get to read comics until I got a little bit older. And I'm thinking right around the time I was in the fourth or fifth grade is when I finally got these three. And it came in one of, like one of those little like grab bags you see at like Kmart in the checkout line there. So my mom broke down and got me these only because I told her that my, my new really good friend uh, Ryan, who you guys know as Austin Volvo, who made an appearance last week on Nick Knack Live uh, when we were kids, we were friends, and, I, and, and she liked him a lot. She just thought he was the nicest young man, in her words, and uh, she figured if, if a nice young man like that reads comics, uh, and she wanted to encourage that friendship, that I could read comics too. So I got these comics thanks to him, in a sense, and uh, these are just absolutely awesome. I absolutely love the way the, the Transformers series started out. It was so different from what you saw on the TV set as far as the Transformers uh, TV series was. The comic just took a completely different uh, direction than the, the TV show did, if you recall, if you actually read these. But I, I just loved them a lot, uh, especially this one. This one got a lot of, lot of reading. I love this one a lot, especially at the end here. There is a whole battle between Megatron and the Dinobots. You guys can see that. Anyway, Megatron and the Dinobots fight on this ski slope, right? And you can see they're really going at it. Look at Megatron layout sludge. Oh, that is so cool. And Ratchet's kind of there too. He's kind of like, uh, he's kind of like hanging out. Of course, Optimus Prime and the rest of the Autobots are in like uh, status lock at this point, or stasis lock at this point. And uh, and yeah, so and so Ratchet's I think is like one of the only Autobots that's that's conscious, and he tries to take out Megatron. Of course. Of course he can after Megatron single-handedly takes out all of the Dinobots, which is really, really freaking cool. Just a, uh, a sentiment to how powerful Megatron was uh, in this particular comic. Um, but this is absolutely freaking cool. Uh, as you can see, Megatron's just taunting Ratchet there. And then Ratchet does finally get the best of him. And, and uh, or Megatron actually maybe just falls by accident. But uh, in order to... to, 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 sh uh, to to kind of uh, uh, shelter his fall there, he transforms into his gun mode and falls into uh, a powder of snow there and is lost for some issues. Um, absolutely freaking cool. And then of course, uh, you get the introduction in this one to Circuit Breaker who comes in the next issue, which is right there. And yeah, this is, this is just, I don't know, man. This was just, uh, this wasn't by any means my favorite comic book, although um, I think that 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 uh, circuit breaker there maybe made my uh, made me a little tingly there in my my, my fifth grade uh, prepubescent years. But anyway, so yeah, it looks like Ratchet gets the rest of the Autobots out of stasis lock in this one, and then of course, and then of course, you know, Circuit Breaker shows up and starts kicking their ass. And look at this Tootsie Roll ad. Look at that. Twenty-five thousand available prizes, and you can win a fucking Schwinn bike, guys. Look at that bike. Oh, that is badass. I love the ads in these old comic books. Doesn't that take you back, man? I'm sure you guys read these. Oh, look at that. Look at that. $24.95, and you can get the Transformers on video cassette. $24.95 for one 20-minute episode of the Transformers back in 1984 dollars. That was really freaking expensive. What the hell is the math on that? 
any rate, yeah, that is really, really cool. Yeah, so anyway, you got Starscream. And it looked like there was like a concert or something, if I think in this one, where, uh, oh no, that's a different that's a different issue. I was thinking there was like a, like a Bruce Springsteen character in it, but no, that's a different one. Anyway, there's Wheeljack there. And there's Frenzy. Ah, oh, so cool. So anyway, that, that's that issue. And, and this, one, this one actually predated this one. This one came out first. And that is, of course, when the Autobots are all in stasis lock because of uh, what the Decepticons did. Really damn cool. You got Ratchet. He's hanging out. He, he rescues Buster and his friends. Buster was like Spike in the, in the uh, comic books, if I remember. But really cool. Look at that. Look at that. You can get some gym equipment. Look at this dude. And I, I should be using my gym equipment more. Pumping some plastic. Remember those? I had a weight set like that when I was a kid. Really cool. Um, yeah, pretty damn cool. And of course, I always love it when, uh, when the, in the, you know, in the Transformers, when the Decepticons would disguise themselves. So you got these construction workers, and the dude picks up Soundwave as he's just like innocently sitting there on the sidewalk. He's like, "Holy shit, a free cassette player!" It's so damn cool. Anyway, good, good stuff. Yeah, there's Optimus. There's all the Autobots in, in stasis uh, there, and then of course Optimus Prime is like decapitated. It was so different from the original cartoon. Now here's another one. I like this one. This one actually is people have, I've actually seen people bitch about this particular issue. I always really like this one a lot. This is the continuation of Megatron after he gets knocked off that uh, cliff at the ski slope there. And he's found later in the springtime by this poor dude who's on the run from the mob, I think, if I remember right. And you got to check out that ad too, man. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, look at Care Bears and lion -O there and Thundercats. That was badass. But anyway, so you got this dude. He's on the run from the mob. They're opening fire on him. And they're going to kill him because, you know, he, he he screwed over the mobster guy. If I remember right, I haven't read this comic in probably 20 years. But anyway, these, these mobsters are about to, you know, about to off him here. It's like real Pulp Fiction, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and, and he finds, he finds laying in the mud there in the, in the, you know, cause from the runoff, he sees Megatron there and he picks him up and just like, he doesn't pull the trigger, but he just blows him away. And it's really damn cool. Oh, look at that. The GoBots guys, the GoBots win a complete set of GoBot toys announcing the Nestle quick challenge of the GoBots game, 250,000 prizes. Look at that. You get, you get some chocolate milk. You get some GoBots. I didn't have a lot of GoBots growing up, but those, that one in particular, always looked really cool to me. I had a friend that had that one. Yeah, pretty damn cool. But anyway, so he takes the, he has the, he has, he has Megatron in the, in the gun mode here, and he's, and Megatron's all jacked up from his fall, and uh, Megatron is like basically like, he basically is like his memory is is erased. He's got like temporary amnesia, and Megatron basically just like commits commits to to help this guy, because uh, he's kind of mindless at this point. And so he doesn't know he, he he doesn't know what to do but to follow commands. So he, he just like latches onto this guy and follows this guy's commands. And what is really cool is later on in the issue, this is so cool. You know, he go, you know, you got the mobster there. There's the mobster guy that wants to off the guy. Look at him. Oh man, he looks like an awesome 80s, 80s villain there. Of course he's got a of course he's got a hot babe there getting out of the pool. Yeah, that was that was I, mean, I remember I was reading this comic book when I was like, you know, 11, 12, so that was that was a little that was a little neat you know anyway so so cool so this poor guy you know he's a good guy but he's just kind of kind of in the wrong situation so to speak and so uh and so the mobster sends his whole like his best dudes after him and uh you know he's hiding out he's running because he's in his apartment building he runs he hides behind it at at, on the roof there and then of course he, t he he commands megatron to shoot him and of course megatron does or shoots the water tower right above him and they all die or they all get the shit knocked out of him and he's like and I did it. I did it. So so then he like goes on his own crime spree now that he's like taking out this mobster guy. So he goes on his own crime spree and he starts like he basically just starts taking out everyone. You know, he's got the cops chasing him and he like blows away the cop car with Megatron. And, uh, you know, it's, it's totally awesome. So he goes on his own freaking crime spree here, which is totally cool. So he's, you know, he's robbing banks. He's got the hot sports car now. He's hanging out with the babes. You know, he, he's, he's got it all now. He's, he's kind of turned into a big shot now. Thanks to Megatron there, you know, he's robbing a big bank there, a lot of cash. Whole 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 National Guard shows up, no problem, because he's got fucking Megatron. Wow, zap, so cool. So anyway, in the end, it all kind of catches up to him though, because the the mobster guy is like, what the hell? I need to take this guy out. This is bullshit. So 
he comes after him and you know and in the end in the end Megatron himself uh, kind of remembers who he is after of course after uh, after he takes out the the mobsters whole mansion so he shows up at the mobsters mansion does this kind of like remind you like the end of like Beverly Hills cop so he like shows up at the mobsters the mobsters mansion just like fucking destroys it takes him out yeah, it takes him out, and then of course Megatron remembers who he is, and Megatron's like, decides not to kill him at the end, and just leaves. And then of course the cops show up and arrest him, and they ask him about his Wonder Gun, and he just says, well, it's not mine anymore, as Megatron walks off into the sunset there. Really damn cool. I always loved this one a lot. Um, I know that was kind of rudimentary YouTubing there to show that off to you guys, but yeah, that one is a really damn good comic book. Yeah, here's another good uh, good issue. This is, of course, Megatron versus Predaking. And this is the one where, uh, spoiler alert, but Megatron Megatron dies in this one. He basically takes himself out on the space bridge. It's really freaking awesome. I won't, I won't, I won't get into too much detail on that one, but that one is really damn, really damn cool as well. So I got a couple of these. I got a ton of these. Really cool. Here's another, uh, here's another thing that I like. This is a graphic novel, and basically this was, this was originally released in comic book form. This is the whole... Um, the whole issue, uh, the whole uh, set of issues with it, and that is the Transformers universe. And basically, this was like profiles of every single Transformer up until that the time of its publish, which was probably 1986, 1987. But it's got like it's got all the Aerobots and Stunicons and Protectobots in there. And there's Jetfire, but I just I would just wa read this for hours. I loved uh, this book a lot. There's Trypticon. So anyway, it was just and it was just nice because it was just something you could pick up and just like you know read you know read a few profiles here and there. And of course, it's even got some uh, characters from the movie. There's Cranix. Of course, Cranix is the guy that's like at the beginning of the movie when uh, that little tiny little tiny world's getting attacked by Unicron. He's like, Oculus, look, it's Unicron. So yeah, so cool. Um, really damn cool stuff here. Uh, love this one a lot. Like I said, I, I, I picked up I picked up this when I was you know at a comic book store when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, I would just like just spend hours and hours reading these, reading these profiles. So damn cool. There's Grimlock. So yeah, I really like this. This was one of my favorites here. All right, and the final piece of media I want to talk about isn't a comic book. It's a sticker book. And this came out the year Transformers the movie came out. And I picked this up at a Circle K, which is like, that was like a poor man 7-Eleven back in the 1980s. I think they still have Circle Ks around today, but they're not like they were. You know, you go down to the Circle K, you get yourself a slush puppy, play some, uh, play some, uh, play some off-road, a uh, video game, and then they had these the sticker book, which, uh, which uh, you could buy separately. Uh, you know, sets of cards, and the cards had stickers in them. And basically, what you would do is you would put in the stickers and you know basically fill in the story you guys can see and you could read the story with a with a, one of those little like red um red like cellophane uh plastic pieces you know that, 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 that the transformers themselves came with um in their boxes but you could buy the stickers to actually get the actual pictures which looked a lot better and uh that was something i did a lot spent a lot of time uh just riding my bike down to the circle k that summer and picking up these stickers to put in this, this sticker book. This was really, really a good time. I had a good time with this. Um, this was this was in the summer before I went into the sixth grade, and uh, we mo we just moved to a new town. We moved to Denver from uh, from Fort Collins, and I didn't have a lot of friends back then because it was my first summer here in Denver, and uh, so this is what I did. I, I, I went to the Circle K and bought these stickers. Of course, it's very incomplete. Um, no chance of ever completing this collection, I would say. Um, that would be pretty tough to do. I bet they're on eBay. I bet I could find these on eBay. But uh, it would be hard to collect all these because I was missing a lot. But anyway, this was really damn fun. And the artwork on it is just, just fucking superb. I, I love that a lot. Some advertising. Look at that. Get yourself a Transformers backpack. Got Snarl on the back there. That's pretty badass. Yeah, some cool shit in here. Um, but yeah, really good stuff. There's Beachcomber and Warpath. So really cool. Love that a lot. That is really cool. So yeah, there's the little red cellophane. I think it came with that too. The Magic Decoder is what they called it. But uh, yeah, this came out from Diamond. I don't know if that's Diamond Select from back in the day. I don't know. But uh, yeah, 
39 cents. I bought this for 39 cents. Can't believe that. Of course, I don't think the sticker uh, sticker book packs were that cheap. I think the sticker packs were like a buck or two. Of course, it came with gum and everything too. So really cool. Good memories. Alrighty, guys. Well, that's about to wrap up this edition of the Plastic Planet. But wait, we got a little bonus time for you. I did promise you to show off one little pickup I got this week. I haven't been buying a lot of shit lately, guys. Just the way it is. I just I'm kind of like got a couple pre-orders and I'm waiting to get fulfilled. Uh, but other than that, I don't have a lot going on. But I did find this guy and I had to pick him up. And of course, the Retro Collection Empire Strikes Back. Picked this up at my local Walmart. Really damn cool. I love this version of Luke Skywalker. So I couldn't say no to him on card here. Probably will never open this, but who knows? It looks really damn cool. I do love uh, that uh, Hasbro is re-releasing these old Kenner figures. And uh, yeah, just really damn awesome. So anyway, that's it, guys. That is going to wrap up this edition of The Plastic Planet. Please like, share, comment. Please do subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little walk down memory lane. Guys, I'm going to be heading out tomorrow night and uh, hopefully do some uh, shooting. Going to go on a little toy run, hopefully. Uh, so I'll get that up, video up for you guys, hopefully, in the next day or two. So look for that. All right, guys. Like I said, it's going to wrap things up here on The Plastic Planet. And like I always like to say, guys, like this, oh, so very, very, very short. So get out there and fill it. Fill it with some plastic crap. All right, guys, till next time. Later. Love you. Stay safe. Bye.